My name is Stina Skeese Cox, and I'm the district director for Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, um, who serves New York's 8th Congressional District, which is Brooklyn and Queens. So my first day on the job with the congressman was his first day on the job, January 3rd of this year. So he's new, um, and I'm new uh, to the office as well. It's a brand new shop. So one thing that I don't think many people are familiar with, uh, and I in fact wasn't myself, even though I'd worked in a congressional office, are the challenges of being a freshman member. When you're sworn in, you start with nothing and you have to build it on your own. It's just like being in a startup. So day one, there were no computers, no furniture, no office leases, no Blackberries. Um, yet we had this district that had been hit heavily by Superstorm Sandy. So while we had none of the infrastructure of an office, we still had constituents that we needed to serve. And it was literally me on the ground in my suit, plugging in wires and calling up phone companies because our office, in fact, our office in Coney Island was hit by the storm. So not only did we not have internet service, we didn't even have the wiring to get the internet. And in the meanwhile, I'm ordering computers. And, and again, the staff had meetings and constituents coming in with requests and we just had to make it work. So in fact I think my, my, my best day, my most challenging day on the job was two weeks after he was sworn in we decided to do our first town hall in Coney Island and I didn't even have a computer at this point. And we made flyers, we put the word out, we called FEMA, the Red Cross, people at the state and we, it was at um, the Gospel Assembly Church in Coney Island, led by the indefatigable Sister Connie. And it was a cold, cold night, of course, in January. We had no idea who was going to show up. Our RSVPs were 17. And that night, over 300 people showed up at the church seeking services post-Sandy. So that was one of those moments when I realized, okay, I've had a tough time setting up an office after the storm. But these families, months after the storm, still don't have heaters or refrigerators or even a home that they can go back into. Uh, so it's, that's been a, a really great challenge, um, but also a really wonderful opportunity as a new office to connect with people and to show them that the government can help them. Okay, the best advice I've ever received, and I've received a lot because in politics, anyone who works in politics, they know everything. So a lot of people um, offer it, uh, even unwarranted. Um, but one piece that has stuck with me over the years, I actually heard from Ellen Malcolm, who's the founder of Emily's List, which is dedicated to electing pro-choice Democratic women. I was an intern there when I was in graduate school, and I asked her what she attributed to her success as a leader. And she told me that the most important thing a leader can have is a staff who will tell you to your face that you're wrong. And that's something that I try to do when I, with the elected officials that I work with, even if it's uncomfortable, to say, hey, I'm going to tell you my opinion. Uh, I think you're off on this, or the tone of the debate is different. Um, here's my perspective. And of course, your boss can do whatever they want with the information. But even now, as a manager, I love it when people challenge my opinion on something. Prove to me that I'm wrong. Uh, let me see the other side of things. Because if you're constantly surrounded by people who are always telling you what you want to hear, uh, you're not going to be successful. So I'm a total nerd. My, uh, my two of my heroes, and I have to say, New York State has a great history of political heroes. Uh, but my two favorites are Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, the, the um, fighters for women's suffrage. And I actually went this June to Seneca Falls. It was kind of like going to Mecca for me. Uh, and got to see where the first women's convention was and uh, the, natural, uh, the National Parks Museum that's associated with it, the National Women's Hall of Fame. Uh, and I actually got so excited with all of the history. For the first time in my life, I got a nosebleed. And it was just too much nerding out. It was too much excitement for me. Uh, my body couldn't handle it. Hmm, ideal weekend. Well, I live in New York City, so of course it involves walking around, seeing, uh, seeing everything, seeing the beautiful views, um, walking along the waterfront. I love Brooklyn Bridge Park and the promenade. I love walking through Clinton Hill and looking at the brownstones. I think just going out into different neighborhoods and exploring is the best thing. You find the best food that way. Uh, you find the most unexpected things, too. Um, so I'd say a, my, my ideal weekend would have uh, the opportunity to catch up on sleep uh, and then the opportunity to, to go out into the city and to experience something new.